good. Hang right on, folks. Today's about a driving around looking at things. Gotta go to town, pick up some parts, pick up some things that are necessary. Uh, that's where Colonel Bill Stevens is buried. He's a main settler, Colonel Bill Stevens was. He lived in here amongst the Indians. He's buried in that little cemetery. I'm going to show you my little sleepy town of Castillo, New York, where I went to school. We live five miles out of town in the country. You see all the hills and stuff in the background, the terrain. Uh, we'll just do, just do a little, just driving around. We'll just keep talking and show you things. Uh, this is a little uh, bird here called Carson. We'll be going through that here in a second. Yeah, they dig our ditches deep here. We used to have room to pull off the roads. They dig them deep so they can fill full of water because they don't know how to drain the darn things. All these hills here you see here, the wall bed log, if you can get that where you can see the log of trails. What you do there, if you get the right shots there, you can see where that, like every 50 feet up these, uh, you see a road. That's how you have to cut this timber. Uh, that's much steeper than it looks right there, believe me, that's steep. There's a little Castile River. Castile was an Indian village. Actually, right here on all these flats that we're coming up on, you'll see uh, this was all where Indian encampments were. Uh, when they plow, you go through and walk behind, you pick up arrowheads of all kinds of different kinds, mostly bird points. But uh, once in a while, you find something a little nicer than that. I found a nice Indian hatch in a stone one. And uh, believe it or not, right here to this field to the right, you at some point you might see a hollow, but down here on this other end, the Indians used to have horse races right here. Yes, they did. They just run a straight line. Real interesting place. The history here is amazing. It's just, just absolutely amazing. The French, this is right here is the original site of Canisteel, actually. These flats are. The, the French commanded Burnett, you know, the whole village. There was quite a population. I understood around 7,000 Indians lived here. Leave it to the French. Made a mess and then walked away. <coughs> I love this time of year. This is farming country. Uh, the one and only satellite tower up here for our cell phones. So you'll see some pretty cool things. We're just on the outskirts of our little village. So we know this fellow's here this farm here. Uh, he, he farms all this ground. And uh, we're coming up on my longer buddy sawmill here on the right. He's got a nice wood miser. Got a cat diesel on it. Yeah, I know it's a Perkins, but it's got a cat on it. So he's got a nice little mill there. There isn't many places anymore left to go by farms and sawmills and then you're right in the town is there. 1972 we had a flood here. This whole darn village was swamped. They had a beautiful house over there. Boy they moved a lot of dirt put that house in, I will tell you that. That was just a steep bank. Good for them. They did it. Yeah. This is it. We're coming into Canisteo. Nice to be driving all one ton again. Yeah, I know. The heater's on. What's that, people? You recognize those? <laughs> there we go. Guys. That comes equipped standard, okay? We didn't pay extra for that. My boy Colin, he got to mess with the truck. Poor thing. 
<laughs> this is an old drone, 454 Vortec. It'll pull right along pretty good. And uh, they don't have the horsepower the old ones had, I've got to tell you that. But they got a lot of torque. They, they're pretty amazing. We don't have much for business in here. Uh, you get your bar, your restaurant, your little pizza place. We're literally coming up on all of the businesses right this here in town. Right here. We got a gas station. <laughs> Police station. Police station Fire right here. Station. Fire station. Pizzeria. Pizza joint. We always stop here. This is a can of steel bank coming up here. You pharmacy. Know. Here's old style pharmacy from back like back in the day. Yep. Right over here, Annie's. That used to be the corner store. That was Tony's corner store growing up. We used to walk down there and get us bottles of pop. It, uh... That was back when you got a pint bottle for a quarter of uh, Coca Cola or something. And then right in here is the bakery and the hardware. Nice old town. This is the church, church district. This valley is so pretty. I couldn't pick a better place to live, people. I really couldn't. Uh, our high school was really quite old, the original part of it. Uh, the little school, what they call it, where the elementary kids go, isn't so much. That's how uh, it was built back in the 50s. But uh, you're going to see the school I went to school in. Right here it is. It used to be called Canisteel Central School, but that's what's still on the front of the concrete. They merged with another school district. That's kind of a neat little place. Sleepy little town. Now back when I was young, all you see was little hellions running everywhere screaming and trying to make snowballs out of what was left of snow. Right there is the can of steel living sign. I'll pull forward. This isn't the Guinness Book of World Records, this is. Uh, world's biggest living sign. That's made out of trees. You used to ride a dirt bike up around that and all around the hills when I was young. That was quite enjoyable. And that's something. There's the red light. The Only red one light. in town. This is Depot Street right here on the right. There's the barber shop. That's where I get my hair cut. Old, old style barber shop. Old man in there. You know, he's been cutting hair since hair was invented. Yeah, I think, uh, God, I don't know how old he is. He's got to be in his 80s. Cullen always gets a buzz cut. Yeah, I go up there get my hair cut every, uh, every couple weeks, go in there, and he sits me right down, and we just get her done. That old man just loves cutting his hair. He's oh, yeah, that's proper. I don't do this. Wow. He says, boy, you sure know how to grow it. <laughs> yeah. Just just tiny little town. Coming up here on the right is uh, Surefine Market. It used to be called uh, Canisteel Big M. Big M. Everybody and, still calls it Big M. Yeah, they call it Big M. When I was in school... This is I, the grocery store. Yeah. When right I was in school, I, I was a butcher here. When I started there when I was 16, I caught me. That's his first job. Yeah. Right there. First, well, my first job wasn't a paying job. I was growing up on a farm. Okay, well, hey, first we paying job. Our, that's for deer hunting. It's the only way to do it. They built this cool little four lane way back. It uh, five miles long, goes from Kansas Steel to Hornell, New York. The reason I'm making this video, a lot of people are curious where we live and what it looks like. So instead of answering 50 comments about, gee, where do you live, where do you live? Kansas Steel, New York. The old road right over there. The, before the four lane, the uh, road followed the river to our right, which you can't see. Every, 
everybody's in a bigger hurry than me, and I'm going 55. We got these rock out crops everywhere around here, just like Pennsylvania. Stump jumper, I bet you got them too, don't you? Yeah, I know you do. We'll have to have you up sometime. Get where you can, let's do it. Yeah, just not a lot to see, and nothing's changed in 75 years. These fields over here to the right, I used to cut hay off of them when I was young. Or I used to put the hay up off of them. Yeah, uh, you'll see them here in just a minute. And over against the hill. Yeah, used to cut that. Now, they were steeper than they look. We're down in that corner where that barn is. We rolled a wagon one day. Full. The fields up on top. I had a one-ton truck get away from me. Went all the way down, wrecked that truck. It's got fired up in there. Had it in low gear. Darn thing just started rolling. Nothing to do. But it popped out of gear. This is coming. You can see a little bird of horn owl. Now it's a population of 10,000, maybe 12,000, maybe. This started out as a railroad town. Still is, kind of. Yeah, yeah. They build, they build trains and subway cars uh, down here. It's pretty much where everybody works. This pretty much lets you know there just ain't nothing here but country. Just nothing but nice country, it really is. This farm coming up here used to be one of the original dairies. They actually uh, bottled their own milk. And uh, this played uh, Hornell with their milk. That funny place for some campers. If you like fishing, this, this is a good place to go. Pretty good fishing. You can go over the lake, which is about a half hour drive, and get lake trout and rainbows. You go below us and get walleye. Crappy. You want largemouth, smallmouth, bass, and brown trout, you fish right here in the river. So for those fishing guys, I'll have to show you someday my private little fishing hole. I'll show you where you get some of the biggest trout you ever see. And it ain't a six foot wide, wide little creek. It ain't very far from here. Yeah, it's uh, first time I fished that little hole, I seen a trout under a rock. I really did. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna pull over. Had uh, something kind of unique happen. We got uh, uh, in April. Daryl Burgess is coming and uh, visiting. We talked about that. And uh, Eric Nelson's coming too at the same time. Now you know we're going to cut some trees and you know we're going to barbecue. Well, there's one uh, thing I know we're going to make. It's uh, called potato bombs. And uh, that ain't my recipe. But I know a good thing when I see it. It's a channel I actually watch a lot. I reached out to them today. It's uh, Barbecue Pit Boys. Uh, their recipe of potato bombs. You want to know how to make barbecue and do it right? Go check their channel out straight away. But I'll show you our little version of making them uh, potato bombs, but you want to see their recipe. You don't know what kind of good cooks these guys are. I've tried quite a few of them, and I really like them. And uh, they said, yeah, cool, Arv, go ahead and do what you want. I said, man, all right. So thanks, Barbecue Pit Boys. That meant a lot. Uh, it happened to be a cold day. I was going to shave my beard off, but I'm glad I waited another day. I always do it when it starts getting 40s and 50s. I shave. This is for protection. This needs to be stylish. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't afford a razor all winter. You know, it, I had to work on this truck. <laughs> and uh, so you got that. Don't be surprised the next day or so this is gone. Uh it gets where when it starts getting warm and it gets itchy. I don't like itchy. Not on my face. You sit there scratching. 
So, until next time, I thank you for showing up. Thanks for the new subscribers. Thumbs up or cool. You're doing a really good job. Keep them comments rolling. I read every one of them. Even though I don't answer a lot of them, I read every one of them. Okay, that's it for today. Goodbye.